Last week, version 1.1.1 of Assetto Corsa Competition was officially released. Included were 6 new cars amongst other cool stuff, features and also a new track. The new cars should all be improved versions of the old ones, since some of them had severe problems. For example, a Honda NSX which was nowhere near somewhat competitive pace or an underperforming Porsche 911. But with time, these cars were evolved and became naturally quicker. Therefore, their BOP was also changed. But to what extent? And how well are they doing in comparison to their old counterparts? Let me just say that some of them climbed the leaderboard, while others fell behind. And a few changed their characteristics completely. But more on that in this video. So before I start with my thoughts about the new cars, I just wanted to explain how I tested the cars, what I have in mind and how I'm going to present the results. Every car needs to be driven differently to maximize its potential. So I try to take this into consideration and am therefore going to rate the cars not on my own lap times, but rather on how I feel about the potential of the car when it's driven perfectly. Additionally, there will be a number which should indicate how difficult the car is to drive. At the end of the video, I am going to show a leaderboard with all cars and ratings and in the order from what I feel could be the best to the slowest. I tried to test all cars in several races on public servers, but since it turned out to be nearly impossible to get a server which runs the same track over and over again with constantly more than 10 people on it, I just stuck with races against the AI. The Hungarian Ring was my test track of choice since it has many different elements in it. Example given high speed corners, low speed corners and a rather long straight. All cars were tested with the default setup and about 30 liters of fuel. Now let's just start off with the first car before I bore you to death with my stupid explanations. The Audi R8 didn't change too much. It feels a little bit lighter than before, but essentially drives almost the same. Regarding cornering, interesting behavior can be observed. While the front end bite is insanely good in slow speed corners, the faster it washes away in long stretched ones. But what I have found to be the most interesting compared to other cars is the general feeling the Audi provides. I felt like going about 2 seconds slower than in all of the other cars but in reality, I was almost driving personal bests all the time. So don't let the R8 mislead you. In the end, its strengths are definitely slower tracks, since the amazing stability under trail braking, combined with massive front end bite, is huge in terms of potential lap time. Next, we have the Honda NSX EVO. While its 2018 counterpart was the least competitive out of all cars, the 2019 version has improved aerodynamics, more power and is overall more balanced. It has a pretty light feeling to it and is one of the most stable cars currently available in ACC. You literally can throw it in any corner and the car will handle it without much correction from your side. The strong mechanical and aerodynamic grip show especially when following another car since it still feels like the Honda is glued to the ground. The loss of downforce is hardly recognizable. However, it also has some downsides. The better it handles following another car and overdriving, the worse it is under trail braking and under traction. It gets loose pretty easily when braking into a corner and the traction is... well, let's just say there is a tipping point. And you really don't get any warnings from the car if you approach this critical point. As soon as you are over it though, the rear will instantly try to overtake you. All in all, I feel that the Honda hasn't as much potential, but is a great car for beginners or if you generally want to improve your techniques regarding accelerating out of corners. The next car was my personal favorite under the 2018 car selection. Its evolved model, the Lamborghini Huracan Evo, promises better aerodynamics and a more balanced feeling. This is somewhat true, at least regarding the improved aerodynamics. 
it still feels like driving on the edge the whole time. What I mean by that is the constant presence of your rear end. In every corner, the Lamborghini gives the feeling that your rear just waits for a tiny moment of overdriving to finally get loose. So it is basically driving on the edge the whole time. And a quick tip from my side. If you happen to lose control of the Lamborghini, do not try to overly correct the car. This will only make matters worse. Let it go off track and just make slight corrections. Otherwise you will have spun faster than you can probably curse. Back to business though. It has loads of power but is rather heavy and therefore suffers a bit under braking. All in all, it has great potential but to extract the most out of it your inputs need to be very sensitive and precise. The McLaren 720S should be an upgrade to the 650S, but in all honesty, I didn't exactly feel that way. Without questioning, it has great aerodynamics, is neat and stable during cornering, seldom gets loose and even if it does, it can easily be caught again. However, following other cars is just horrible. It feels like you lose almost all of your downforce and really hinders the car's potential. Additionally, it is rather bad under braking, which honestly did surprise me, considering its high levels of downforce. In the end, I think it is best used as a hot lap car and not in actual races. Okay, so the next car is hands down going to be the new number one in ACC and most of you probably already know which car I'm going to talk about. The Porsche 911 2 is just ridiculous under acceleration, is insanely stable in corners, has probably the second best rotation under cornering, after the Audi of course, and its traction overall is great. However, to control this beast, the driving skills need to be at least decent. And as the saying goes, one picture says more than a thousand words. I'll give you a short demonstration of what I mean by it is hard to control. one ever so small mistake is enough for the Porsche to go all crazy. The last remaining car is the Aston Martin and to be honest, the sadder it is that it has lost its V12 engine, the more it profits from this change performance wise. It feels heavy but one does not really notice it under braking or during cornering. The Aston is the most stable car overall and cannot be unsettled even by major driver mistakes. It is hands down the easiest car to drive and additionally has great potential. Now that we are through with all cars, I present to you GT Racing's totally accurate because all results are absolutely not based solely on my personal feeling about a car and my personal driving style, official leaderboard of all cars in ACC. If you are dissatisfied in any way and want to vent about my stupidity regarding the placements of the cars in the leaderboard or think that your favorite car should have been ranked higher, feel free to do so in the comments. So yeah, with that out of the way, if you could get something out of this video, you could consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I will catch you in the next one. Cheers!